Uh, good evening, uh, or good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you're going to be listening to this recording. My name is Shingo Gibson Suzuki. I'm a Japanese teacher at Faulty Learning coach um, in a secondary school in Melbourne. Um, tonight uh, we have Shambles Guru, um, aka Chris Smith, presenting the session on iPad apps for classroom teachers. And uh, like I was saying before, both Ness and I um, have known Shambles for quite a long time, uh, for like a couple of years. And every time we attend a session on iPad apps, um, we always come out with great ideas and apps. Um, so hopefully you can come out um, with some ideas for your classrooms. And I think currently he has over 1,400 apps. And yes, you actually heard it correct, correctly, 1,400 um, apps on his iPad at the moment. So um, obviously we won't be able to get through everything, but hopefully he can pick and choose some of the ones that it's fairly easy to use. Um, before we hand it over, I'd just like to thank you, Steve Huggenden for letting us use this room and it's great to have so many people, over 40 people attending the session and without Steve's generosity we won't be having any of these sessions so thank you to Steve and I'll hand it over to you Shambles. I want to put the microphone on. Uh, Shambles, your microphone is not on at the moment, so just so you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Um, I need some... Uh, hey, well done, Carol. Get a house point to Carol. You didn't have to come to Saturday detention as usual. Um, I uh, would like some feedback first, if I could, on the quality of my audio. How's my audio? If uh, between 1 and 10, 10 is good and 1 is very bad. Can you put in chat where you think my audio is for you? Oh, that's looking great. One of the few things I splurged out on uh, a few years ago was a really good microphone. Uh, so I'm not just wearing a headset, actually the earbuds I'm wearing are the earbuds from my iPhone, but uh, uh, the microphone is a Samsung microphone, condenser mic, and if you've done any recording in school at all, or on your own, uh, it's worth uh, saving up and paying out for a really good uh, microphone. Okay, so let's... Uh, let's uh, get started here. Now one of the problems I will have is how long are your pages taking to load? How long are, this, are the materials that I'm uh, showing taking to load for you? Um, if for some reason it does take a long time or you find you have a blank screen for a long time, put something in chat and I'll, I'll, I'll look in chat. Um, a bit about me initially, uh, this is actually my name card. Uh, uh, Shambles Guru. It's uh, uh, I have an avatar called Shambles Guru, and I used to do a lot of work a few years ago in Second Life, a, a, a 3D fully immersive virtual world. The Second Life hasn't quite taken off as people expected at the time, but I have an avatar, and you'll see what he looks like later. And uh, oh, nothing on the screen. Okay. Usually takes a bit of time. There are some, uh, when you're presenting, there are some guidelines you can see next to people's names if things are still loading. Um, but I'll try and slow down if it's taking a while. It depends on individual connections, of course. Anyway, my, my avatar is called Shambles Guru because I have a website called Shambles since 2002. And there's lots of information on that. And everything I'm going to uh, touch on today and more will be at shambles.net slash ICT. You can see it on there. I see what will be good, Carol and uh, uh, Ness and, and, and Shingo, is maybe you could type some of these in as, as I go along into chat so they become hyperlinks. Um, I see it's, it is my name card. And you see there's a QR code. If you've never used QR codes in your classroom, put it on your to-do list. I advise you putting it on your to-do list to learn what they're about. Um, if you have a phone or a mobile device with a QR code reader on it, 
and you point it at my name card, which is on the screen, um, then it will take you off to loads of information about me. Um, the most innovative way I've seen QR codes used in the classroom was a biology classroom I went into once, and uh, there was a there was a skeleton in the corner. It's always, have you noticed? There's always a skeleton in the corner of the, of a biology room. It doesn't matter what level it is, um, and uh, and all over the skeleton were cute little paper stickers with these QR codes in. And what the students could do is they would uh, they would go up to a particular bone. Let's say the skull, because I can remember that easily. And there'll be a little QR sticker on the skull, and they point their mobile device at that with a QR reader in their mobile device, which are free. Um, and uh, it would then take them off to information about the skull. And the biology teacher had put hours into making this up, and it was brilliant. But I'd take it the next stage if if I was, and I think the the, the biology teacher would now is that. What you'd have to do with the students is to say to the students, look, you have, we're doing a project on skeletons. Your, you or your group is in charge of this particular bone. Um, and what I want you to do is to research some information about it or create some information about it, put it on the internet, and make a QR code for other students to get to your information. Um, that sounds very, very, very lengthy, but it's actually not. Once you've done it the first time, like everything in teaching, once you've done it every time, the first time, after that it's easy, especially if you let the kids do it. And the back of, I thought I'd put it on for interest, the back of my uh, paper name card is that uh, word cloud, which I think are all the words that are associated with what I do, which is ed tech, uh, teacher training and conferences. Um, and uh, you can make word clouds. Uh, there are some uh, there are some uh, apps which allow you to make uh, word clouds on uh, on your mobile device, and I have a list of them, and they're listed there. And it, it, it looks like Carol's put it in already, which is which is brilliant. And word cloud, I love word clouds. Um, the uh, um, you know, for for focusing in on a particular on the important issues in any particular topic, word clouds are a bit a uh, uh, nice motivation for the kids. A bit, they're a bit more uh, interesting than just typing out something on a piece of paper. And the most famous of them, and one of the very first ones, was Wordle. And you can see Wordle is actually there at the at the very bottom here. So Wordle was one of the the, the ones that many teachers were using originally. Is anybody using word clouds? I'm just looking in chats. Yeah, they 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 could spell. There's some sites which allows you allows you to allows you allow you to make a word cloud in a shape. Now my word cloud is pretty boring. It's a re in a rectangle, but you can make your uh, word cloud in a shape and fit into something like uh, an outline map of Australia, for instance. Now that that's fun. Or I mean, Thailand is one where you can make a word cloud and the outline of the words make an elephant. And that's really good fun. Uh, Kelly, maybe uh, maybe you'll be able to try to use one of the free apps now. The free app, if you've got a, a slow slow computers in the uh, in the lab, then maybe that would that would help you. The um, down in the bottom right hand corner of the slide. Um, I put I always I put this in all my materials to say how it can be used, how my work can be used, um, and it actually says Creative Commons. And I'm going to ha have a whole session on this. I'm not. We have Creative Commons, and it can be copied, it can be modified. You can't sell these resources, uh, and and I forgot what the last one is. It's a little person. What's the last one? Can we remember? Yeah, Creative Commons. It, it lets it lets students and teachers know whether they can use this work or not. Now, if you if you take all of my slides for today and you sell them for a lot of money, I want a percentage, please. So, uh, um, but but 
my introduction with students to copyright is by asking them to copyright their own work. And they'll say, oh, I don't want to do that. And I'll say, so it's okay for me to take your work and put it in a CD and sell it and make money. And then they go, what? Um, and then they learn what the symbols stand for because they want to use it on their own work. So but they don't see that in many, in many schools. I mean, not many students are encouraged to copyright, even if it's Creative Commons, their own, uh, their own work. What we're going to do in the next 50 minutes, we're going to cover uh, these five areas, presenting in the classroom. I'm talk, going to talk a little bit about uh, ways to connect, uh, and not just in the classroom, in your own home, which is fun. Uh, how to find apps, especially free ones. We're going to look at some of Apple's own apps. We're going to look at uh, some productivity tools and apps, and video streaming. I like this cartoon, which will take a little while to load, I suspect, because there's so much on it. Um, so I will uh, wait for that to load. Julie, Ian, that's really helpful when you say got it. Um, really helpful to me. Actually, I'm monitoring what I'm doing on a completely different iPad. And it isn't loading very fast on my iPad, which is uh, which is uh, worrying for me, but not really, not too much. Oh, there it comes. It's appeared on my iPad. Um, I love this. Nothing to do with technology. It's just like a cartoon I saw many years ago on all the things that may be going on in your classroom, <laughs> and, I, and I love it. Uh, and and all it, all I put it here for is just to remind remind ourselves is how do we do this job? Be, to be perfectly honest, I wonder how one person in a room of students actually manages manages the environment. And now what we've done is on the top of all this, we're putting an IT layer where students may well have individual mobile devices and doing individual things. And if, and if we're looking at individualizing learning, um, and they're all learning at their own pace uh, uh, on their own topics. How do you survive that? Uh, and it's an impossible task. But as long as you realize it's an impossible task, then the men in the white coats will not come to collect you in a few years' time to take you away to the, to the mental asylum. Um, so, but I still, you know, I've been I have been teaching for, for many, many, many years now. In, uh, in Asia and Jamaica and the UK, and, uh, and it always amazes me how, how teachers can manage an environment. We do it for granted, I think. We take it for granted. Okay, the next, uh, the next one is, well, this one, what I want to do here is, uh, let's see, this is, let me move this over to here. And, uh, okay, let me move that to there. And let me move this over to here. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to do this. And uh, let me do this. What are your favorite apps? Now, I'm guessing that some of you, especially if you're English teachers, will hate the fact I've done uh, a letter R there instead of. Uh, just, uh, uh, just A R E. Now, what I'd like you to do is, I can't move that down. I'll try and again in a minute. Okay, okay. There's a to go. What I'd like you to do is to, on this whiteboard, I would like you to. Oh, somebody moved it for me. Collaborative work. Uh, uh, I'm impressed with that. Um, wait, I may even have. I have an in-house audience behind me of about 400 people, and they, they were just admiring whoever moved the, the text. Um, so it started. So just type in somewhere on here. If you if you've never done it, just play uh, on the left-hand side of the whiteboard. You should see, and there's a little. Uh, hand there pointing at it, 
you should see some controls and you can choose a, you can write it freehand with a pencil or you can type it. Uh, but you're boring so far. They're not big, they're not colorful, they're not different fonts. Play with, play with those. Ah, play with those. Explain everything. I love that. Screencasting. <laughs> See, so I don't know. Dirty hands, I don't know. Ability, I know. Chatterpix. Oh, Dragon Dictation. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You're getting, uh, you're getting creative. There's something you can also do if you're asked by a, a facilitator or presenter to do something like this. Actually, if you have a... <laughs> there's always somebody in the class. If you have uh, an icon, a logo, a, a little JPEG or a GIF file uh, in a folder, you can actually just drag it onto the screen. You don't have to upload it in any particular way. You can drag it. Oh, look at this. And we have a math specialist in the room. I don't know borrow box. And she, what I'd love to do in the next 40 minutes is to say, tell me about borrow, tell us about borrow box. Tell us about uh, what other ones don't I know here? 30 hands, I don't think I know that one. Tell us about that. Dragon Dictation, I know. Book Creator for creating online books. Great for storytelling. Uh, I know that. Rainbow Sentences, I've seen but can't remember. I know the. <laughs> Adobe Voice. I have Adobe Voice. I don't think I've ever used it then. It's blocked at schools. You know, there's a way to get round all. Anyway, we should we should delete this bit from the recording. There's a way to get round uh, school blocks most fairly easily. I tell you why I know because if you if I go to work in China. Uh, so many things are blocked in China by what, what they warmly term the Great Firewall of China. Uh, but if you know how to, using something called a VPN, often you can get you can get around it. But not to be covered today. <laughs> are you warming up? <laughs> Pocket a light, play school art maker. Edu creations, great. There's two screencasting uh, apps that have been mentioned. Screencasting where the student or you would actually do something on your iPad or your mobile device and it would record it while you're doing it. And highly motivational for, for, for students, for kids. Uh, and we could have a whole session on screencasting. I think screencasting is one of the skills that every teacher and every student should have in their digital toolbox from a very young age. Um, well, the, the teachers from a very young age. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe that's something to ask the moderators to put on their list uh, for the future. It would be uh, um, screencasting. We're going to move on, uh, I think. Sh Shinga, uh, sorry, Shambles. Uh, Carol, I think, has a question there. She had her hand up. OK. <laughs> it wasn't a question. I thought you were going to ask me about borrow box. I thought I'd pick one that you didn't know. Well, there's, there's quite a number there I don't know. Do you, do you want to do that? Can you? I'm going to start a clock. You have 60 seconds starting from right. now. Borrow box. Right. Borrow box is one of my favourites because I use it to borrow books from my local libraries, whether they be e audio books or e-books. And in my loans, 
I can see when they're due for return. And of course, I read them on the screen in the iPad. And BorrowBox is by Belinda Digital. And I think it's probably available in many other places, not just Aubrey Wodonga. BorrowBox. So this is from your real local paper-based book library, right? Not digital. Correct. You go to the library online and select the app and then you have access to books that you can borrow online for free. Great. And you get the actual book itself. Is it posted to you or is it in an electronic form, digital form? Yeah, they're all electronic. So you can have audio books or e-books for reading on your screen. Oh, uh, I see. Great. Lovely. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, that's a pretty good list. I think what you, you're doing now is you're, you're building up an agenda for future webinars. Cup of coffee. <laughs> you have to keep a sense of humour. If you don't have a sense of humour, life's not worth living. We take ourselves too seriously sometimes. I remember somebody want. No, I'm not going to share that story. Let's move on. Otherwise, we're not going to have uh, enough time. Thanks for sharing those. Uh, I want to talk uh, for five minutes about how you might connect up your, your devices to maybe a projector or a TV in the classroom. Although you could replace the word classroom by uh, at home. So um, let's see, and there's lots of permutations here. And in your classroom, you may have Apple, you may have Windows, you may have a projector, you may have a TV. So let's start off, what should I do first? So here's the teacher, and here's the group of students. Uh, and the teacher might have on the front desk, his or her front desk, they might have um, a window, let's start with Windows, a Windows desktop machine, or a, a Windows laptop machine. Actually, don't you like the way these students are, are sitting? I uh, a bit bigger. I I like the way that the desks are set out there. They're not in rows, but they're not in a circle or a square. It's an interesting layout. So it still allows collaboration with several people, and it still allows them to have their own device. I rather quite like that. So anyway, um, and at the front of your classroom, you have a projector screen. We put the projector screen here. And what you'd like to do, <laughs> what you'd like to do, OCD. Rachel, what's an OCD? What your digital projector? OCD, Rachel. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Oh, of course. It, okay, okay. Uh, so you want what you'd like to do is the teacher has uh, might have a, an iPad. Let's give, the, let's give the teacher an iPad. Okay. So the teacher's got this iPad here. And what you would like to do is you would like to be able to any time during the lesson display the teacher's iPad on that projector screen or have one of the students display their pad on the projector screen. Now what you obviously need is you need a projector. So I have a projector. So here's my projector. Make it a little bit bigger. It's getting very crowded this page, isn't it? So we've got a projector. I'm, I'm hoping that you will have projectors in your classrooms now, is that right? Mostly, yeah, I, sh I would hope so now. It's interesting, I started off this particular consultancy, I mean now in 2002, and I carry my own projector with me because most schools in 2002 didn't have a projector. <laughs> I bet some of you are sitting there going, wait a minute, I was at high school when I was at 2002. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are, there are several ways. One is, 
is a bit of software you can buy called Reflector. I'll bring it up here. It's unfortunately it's not free, but there is a there is a trial, and it's called Reflector, and it's uh, you can do a Google to find you can Google it, and it's uh, a company called Air Squirrel that actually makes it. And what you do is you put uh, Reflector onto your Windows machine. Now it will work with Apple, but there's no need to use it with Apple because it's all built in with Apple. So you put Reflector onto your uh, uh, Windows laptop or your Windows desktop machine. And once you've done that, what you can, you, uh, oh, you need, <laughs> what have I missed out? What an idiot I am, I've missed out Wi-Fi. Need Wi-Fi because all the devices need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. <laughs> yeah, it is an interesting table layout. So, what did you take away from this web webinar? Well, it was how to set up the tables. <laughs> um, you need to set up. You need to all be on the same Wi-Fi. And when you put Reflector onto uh, onto your Windows machine, then if you have, let me bring this to the front. Move to the front. When you, and I'm going to cover up some things here. If you've got an i, oh, silly boy. Try that again. When you scroll up, up from the bottom of your iPad, here we go. When you scroll up from the bottom of your iPad, here we go. I'm going to make it really big. This is my iPad screen. When I scroll up from the bottom. You'll see here, it, you can't read it, it says AirPlay. And for me, it says, because I'm doing it at home, it says Shambles Guru HP, that's my desktop machine. And it also says my living room TV and my bedroom TV. And I'll talk about that in a minute, why they're showing. And so you just have to, if I clicked on there, and let me get rid of this now then it would appear on the Windows machine, go to the projector and go to the screen. And to remind you where I got, how I got to this, it's just the screen on my iPad. You roll your finger up from the bottom and then this bit pops up and you'll see uh, AirPlay as a button here and you'll see all the devices on the same Wi-Fi. Jamie, that's great. You, it will. Uh, it can go onto an interactive whiteboard as well. And it couldn't be if it was a, uh, a plasma screen here instead of a, a screen and a projector. It would also work there as well. So that's one way of, uh, of uh, connecting. Now, if you have uh, um, a, uh, an Apple machine here, so let's get rid of uh, our Windows machines, throw them out the side here. If you have an Apple machine, then it's built into Apple. You don't have to buy a reflector. It's actually just built in, and it would work um, in the same way. So these would have to be connected. This would have to be connected to the projector. Now, there's another way, and that is to use an Apple TV. Uh, let, let me... Uh, let me um, let me leave this here. An Apple TV. Now, if you, does anybody have an Apple TV? This is what it looks like. It's not really a TV. It looks like this. Oh, that's brilliant. At home. Apple TV. I didn't have... I, in Thailand, well, they're less than 100 US dollars. I don't know how much they are in, uh, in Australia, of course. Um, they're very cheap. And if you plug this into your, um, uh, well, if, if, you, if you plug it directly into your projector, great. Um, or you plug it directly into your TV, or you can plug it into your laptop, um, that's great. But once you plug it, your Apple TV into one of these devices, then your iPad will stream to the Apple TV. Oh, 
yes, thanks for that. Chromecast is a, is the Google equivalent of the Apple TV. Now I have Apple TV at home in my machines at home, uh, and it's great. I just plug the Apple TV into my big plasma screen in the living room, and it means I can sit on the couch and uh, and AirPlay my iPad or my iPhone to the Apple TV, so you can watch what you're doing there. It's great for parties. Forget the classroom bit for a moment. It's great for parties because what happens is you bring up the YouTube app on your uh, iPad and you've got your party guests there sitting and you'll say, what's your favorite music to dance to? And they will go on your iPad, choose the music that really gets them standing up and dancing. And it, of course, the YouTube video plays then off the big screen in the, li in the living room or the bedroom or wherever, you, wherever your screen is. Um, so for parties, they are brilliant. People choose the music which really turns them on. And you don't have to do it. Uh, so highly rec forget the classroom for a second. Highly recommended for parties. Uh, and of course, people choose all sorts of different videos as well. Great resource, YouTube. Okay, Jess has just said, I use VGA to iPad cable. So you're right, a number of the, these things need special cables to connect to uh, uh, connect to different devices. This this device, this is a HDMI cable, and HDMI comes out of the uh, Apple uh, TV. Uh, and what else do we have here? Just mentioned VGA. What does VGA look like? If you don't know these, you'll know. This is what a VGA looks like. It's not audio, it's video only. Whereas HDMI here is um, audio and video together. Um, and you can buy at exorbitant prices some connectors. Let me look at this connector. This connector is from the iPad to, a, uh, to VGA. And they charge you a ridiculous amount of money. Here's another connector. Which is, if I can get up the corner of it, this is from the Apple uh, iPad socket to HDMI. So you can get all of these uh, from the Apple Store, of course. And uh, uh, they even sell in the Apple Store this thing. Let me make this, let me throw all this down the bottom here. And then and this is the last one I'm going to show on this page and we move on. This is an Apple TV and HDMI comes out of it, HDMI comes out of it and it goes into a converter which changes it to VGA. If you have an old TV, you'll need that. Um, but Apple TVs are one of the best kept secrets in Apple, I think. Uh, very good. There's a rumor that they're going to update it at the end of the year, but uh, there's always a rumor. Oh, and that's a lovely reminder. We have uh, iPads which have 30 pin connectors, and then iPads with these connectors I've been showing here. Um, if you have an Apple TV, you don't need to connect it to your iPad with a wire because you can do it wirelessly. On the, as long as they're both on the same network. Oh, and there is a, thanks for the price area. There is a, uh, there is a caveat here, it's a big word. There is a health warning here, is that sometimes tech departments put something on their Wi-Fi to shop, stop you doing airplay like this. And they, they get worried about uh, students using it to send stuff to each other um, and uh, and so actually switch it off. So you need to have a chat with your uh, tech department if some of these things don't work. I'm just looking to see if there are any questions. This is the question I expected hasn't happened. See all these students here. What happens if they all send their, if they all send their screens to the projector? Uh, I understand, Julie. 
I should do that. I, uh, I cheat when I visit schools. I actually take in a, another Apple device, which I plug in, which creates my own Wi-Fi, and then I use that because I know that's going to work. And that's only about 100 US dollars as well. Uh, Apple Airport Express. I use an Apple Airport Express. I carry around in my bag uh, to ha so that I can connect. And I plug that into, often I can plug that into the school network and use my, my own Wi-Fi. The, uh, something I missed out, oh, thank you, Apple Airport Express. Um, actually, you're very fortunate. If you have your own classroom and you're not moving around, you have, you have the, the privilege of being able to set it up so it's exactly what you want. And that's, that's a great thing to be able to do. Um, I'm more of a secondary teacher than a primary teacher, moving from classroom to classroom. Although I was a science teacher, so I was in labs much of the time. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that Reflector can have a password set on it so that if people don't know the password, then they can't uh, mirror their devices to the projector screen at the front. But to control who sends their screen to this, their, their, their iPad screen to the screen at the front of the classroom, uh, old fashioned classroom management. You know, if somebody wants to do it, they do it only with the permission of the teacher. Uh, and of course, if somebody does it and you haven't given them permission, you know who it was because you, know, you can see their screen and the rest of the class can see their screen up there on the wall. At least say, you say, you say, put all the screens up like a grid. Um, do you do that or are you saying that will be a nice thing to be able to do? Uh, you should be you should be swapping places. Um, the answer is I don't think the solutions I've shown just now will put a grid up of all their of all their screens. But there is commercial software, uh, local area network software, that uh, different companies have uh, developed to allow you to do that to to take all of the screens and put them up there as a grid, which is great. Uh, but another uh, and if and if as you evolve through through this technology and it becomes second nature, then that's something worth looking at. Let's move on. We've only got 20 minutes left. I'm going to be my timing is uh, atrocious. I'm keeping an eye on uh, on who is uh, on who is uh, putting questions down. If anybody, Nick's hello. Right, finding apps. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate this, but I probably won't now. I'm just going to recommend some two apps. I'm going to recommend two apps for finding apps. <laughs> this, is, this is one of them, uh, Apple Learning. And the nice thing with this, although it's a bit USA-centric, the nice thing with Apple Learning is that they have a whole team of uh, volunteers who are reviewing apps. And what they've done is they've set it up so that uh, you can choose your school level, uh, preschool, primary, middle school, high school. And you can choose a subject that you're interested in, geography, history, English. It'll show you some apps that it's recommending. Uh, some are free, some you pay for, for them. And uh, uh, with a review on why they're recommending these particular apps. So to download that, uh, Ness, there are Android equivalents for lots of these apps, but not all of them. And in fact, there are lots of Android apps which aren't available for the iPad as well. Um, but many of these very popular ones, they they uh, uh, they are cross-platform. They, they have an Android version, a Google version, and uh, an, I, an, an Apple version. So that's one of the apps. And I was going to demonstrate it, but I won't unless we have time, which I don't think we will. And the one I use nearly every day is this one. This has saved me a pile of money. Um, it's called Apps Gone Free. 
And what they do is every 24 hours, now for me it's about 11 o'clock at night, Thailand time. So for you, for most of you, it's going to be early in the morning when you're asleep. So you'd see this every morning when you wake up. Here's your breakfast challenge. Um, what they do is they list apps which have gone free for maybe one or two days. And I've saved a fortune on this. Um, uh, there's some really good ones. There's some rubbish, I have to say that. There's some rubbish and there's games as well which you can ignore. But, ev ignore. but every now and again there are gems of apps which can be quite expensive. $5, $10 apps. And for 48 hours or 24 hours, they're free. And so you could let the students know and say, look, here's a really good drawing app. I'd like you to download that. It's free today. So you have to download it in the next 24 hours. Yeah, there's lots of them, uh, uh, Nick. There, 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 there are lots of different, uh, uh, different people doing this now. I'm just choosing two that I use um, a lot. Actually, the, the other one is Apple's own uh, uh, App Store, which is uh, which is probably on your, I, your Apple device if you have it. And if you're in uh, Google, then it will be the Google Play Store. So um, there's that one there. So that's the Apple Store on that. Um, I hope the speed is still working for you. And these things are appearing on the screen at more or less the same time as as I talk. So I'm not going to touch on that anymore. I'm going to move on. Let me move on. Any questions? Throw them in there. The problem is storage on iPads. You're right. Uh, it's the uh, and of course, how how much did you spend now? I, I splashed out. My iPads are 128 gig iPads, and on this particular iPad, as we mentioned at the beginning, I think I have 1,400 apps, um, <laughs> and that's a, a lot of that is because I downloaded the free ones when they were free, uh, but I haven't even got around to looking at some of them. Many of them yet. Um, um, anything free is a bonus. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, right, yeah, anywhere where you can save money. Now I used to. Let's see, that's reminded me. There used to be an app which would only list free apps that were in the Australian iTunes App Store. And I tried to use it a couple of months ago, and it seems as though it had gone dead. But you might want to do a search to find out whether or not there is an app which does the same as this Apps Gone Free app I've shown here. If there's an app that actually shows uh, only Australian apps in the Australian iTunes store. Uh, and that brings me to the point that not all apps are in every store. If something is in the American iTunes store, if there's an app in there, it may not be in the Australian iTunes store or in the English, the British iTunes store. Um, so sometimes you may not be able to find them. And to be perfectly blunt about this, Whenever I'm searching for apps, I don't go to the iTunes App Store because I find the iTunes App Store is very difficult. The search engine leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I just go to Google. If I'm looking for an app, like if you're looking for apps gone free, how can you find it? I would simply not go to the App Store. I will go to Google and type in apps gone free. And often you find somebody who's uh, reviewed it and they've got a link to it in the App Store uh, from their review. Because um, you can waste a whole load of time, and time is so difficult, uh, so 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 precious for us. You know, we we have families, right? So that's uh, finding apps. That's, there's a lot more to that, but uh, that's my ten cents worth. It's worth mm, mentioning Apple's own apps. Let me mention some of Apple's own apps very quickly, because it gets forgotten. And I was going to do this slide. But I'm not. I'm just going to show these screenshots. Let me uh, wait a few seconds so this downloads. Ian, good point. Apps sometimes don't stay around, uh, so it's good to get them when you can. Don't. Uh, what's that word where you can't make up your mind and you never do anything? Prevaricate. Is that it? Prevaricate. That doesn't sound right. Okay. Um, is there some app to make websites or a presentation? Oh, absolutely. Procrastinate. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> um, absolutely. 
Next, actually, there's loads of them, and I would actually change your question. There's uh, other apps also to to help you with digital storytelling, uh, and maybe another one you can uh, contact uh, Shingo or Carol or Ness and say, look, how about a session on just digital storytelling apps in the future, um, or apps to make websites or presentations. Um, there's there's actually lots of them now, and most many of them are free. Um, so something for I think Shingo has just written it on a piece of paper on his desk. I bet. Anyway, let's go through apps. I have about 20 Apple apps. And these come free with Apple. Um, there's the camera, of course. <laughs> a lot of people who use the Apple cam camera don't realize that you can, also, you can do things like panoramas on it. And you can also do time-lapse photography just using the standard camera app on the iPad and the iPhone. So if, you, if you're doing a... Uh, a science project, and you wanted to speed it up. Time lapse photography is built into this to the camera. Uh, there's the clock, the uh, nice clock, and play with that. Find time time differences. It's a world clock. <laughs> but to be honest, again, why do I keep saying that? But the, the clock, I actually rarely go to the clock. If I want to set an alarm, I use Siri on the Apple devices, and I say, "Hey Siri, uh, set an alarm for six o'clock tomorrow morning." And it sets it for me. Uh, and set an alarm in 20 minutes, and it sets it for me without going to the app. There's messages, which is SMS. I see we've got about 10 minutes left. Oh, I just said, "Hey Siri," and my iPad responded. You, just, you may have just heard it. Um, there's the messages, SMS. Unfortunately, it, it doesn't really communicate with non-Apple devices, so I don't use that. Apple Maps which is brilliant. The App Store, which is the middle one. To the right of that is the iTunes Store. Bottom left-hand corner is FaceTime, which is uh, video conferencing, but only between Apple devices. I would use other things than, than FaceTime. Notes, notes, the, bit, the middle at the bottom. Notes is very basic notes, but it's going to change in the next two months. Notes is almost going to change into a desktop publisher. You're going to be able to put pictures and all sorts of things. Sorry, shambled through. Can you try that again in fewer words? <laughs> my, every time I mention Siri, my one of my I've got two iPads on my desk. One of them keeps answering. Um, find my iPhone, which just tells me where all my devices are. Let me throw that away. Um, actually, also find my Find my i. What does it find my find my i find iPhone? It's bottom right hand corner. Find iPhone. Also allows my wife to find out where I am because she says, "Oh, where's his iPhone?" And he must have his iPhone with him. Uh, so you can find out why, where where I am. If your students have iPhones and you use that app, parents can find out where their kids are if they're online. Well, if they're not online, it will tell them the parents where their students, their children were when they were last online. Uh, let's go through this. I see the timing is not too bad. I was going to do some live stuff, but I cannot. These next apps, I'm very sad about these apps in many respects because they're they're not used. But t teachers are busy people, and we don't have time to browse and spend looking at them. But iTunes University, this first one on the top left hand corner, there's some amazing materials there on a whole host of subjects, and it's not just university. It's not just uh, tertiary education. It's also K-12 education. Actually, it's lifelong learning education. <laughs> I love the term lifelong learning. I'm a lifelong learning addict. And somebody once told me that, no, they don't call it lifelong learning. They call it K to gray. And I, and I really love that term. So from kindergarten to when your hair goes gray. And, and lifelong learning is a skill that we all need now. Because what you learned 10 years ago is probably not so relevant now. <laughs> and I was at a presentation once, and I mentioned this uh, K to Gray, and somebody said, uh, oh, I've got a better one. And I said, what's that? Now, don't get upset with what I'm going to say now, because it's a little bit rude. And they said, no, we don't say K to Gray. What we say is from sperm to worm, <laughs> which, which I thought was really good. Um, but be careful who your audience is when you tell them that. <laughs> so uh, uh, iBooks. What is, uh, and so much free stuff in iBooks, it's just phenomenal. 
Um, so when you're on holiday at the beach next, or whenever you have a break, it's worth having a look through it for the iBook, but at iBooks. And many students know about these apps because they can do the research. You don't have to do it for the students. Even primary school students, you don't have to do it. Newsstand, which is the third one on the right on the top row, is the, the newspapers and magazines. Podcasts, oh, if you're not a podcaster, I would love to do a webinar just focused on this app. Podcasts are just phenomenal resources. Whatever you're interested in, if you're a train spotter, a stamp collector, a woodworker, you're interested in the history of Sydney, people are making podcasts about all of these different um, topics. But more powerful than that, than listening to podcasts passively, the nice thing is you can listen to video or audio. Um, what is even better is for the students to make their own podcasts. And a podcast could be uh, a radio station for the school. So your class, once a week, did a 10-minute did a, a, a news program, which could go out as video or just video and audio, or just audio. Um, and, uh, and it could be looked at by anybody on the internet that you wanted it to be looked at. Or it can be in your own uh, closed walled garden. Um, but more on that, maybe in a future date. Reminders, is there tips? Well, tips just gives you tips about the uh, Apple device. Let's throw that away. And I'm watching the clock. Uh, what have I got on this one? Uh, we have uh, Pages, which is the uh, Microsoft equivalent of, uh, which is the Apple equivalent of Microsoft Word. Oh, and Windows 10, out today around the world, free. If you have a Windows machine, you can upgrade date it to Windows 10, but probably best to wait for a while. Today's the day. It's so on all the news today. Keynote is a bit like PowerPoint, numbers like Excel for spreadsheets, iMovie. iMovie is an app. It's a great little app for ed editing videos on here. And GarageBand, if you have a musician, a talented musician in your class, they should be looking at GarageBand. I'm not sure if it's free. I can't remember. I think you used to pay. I have a feeling it used to be free. It's now free. But I can't remember. If you know, throw it into, uh, throw it into the chat. This, what else have we got? We've only got four more to go. Music, which is uh, Apple's new music uh, uh, streaming music service. Although I'm a big fan of streaming music for me, I use Google Music. They have a streaming music service, and it's free. Uh, I also use Spotify uh, as a streaming music service as well. I like listen listening to music, especially when I go on walks. If I go on a walk up a hill or in the mountains or somewhere, I love listening to streaming music. And the nice thing with some of them, like Google Music, which isn't here, uh, Google Music, you can download the music first. Even if you don't own it legally, it's great. Photo booth. <laughs> Photo booth is you take your own picture and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things to it. WWDC is a conference they have every year. If your technical department wants to learn some technology about Apple, there's lots of their seminars on this WWDC app. And the very last one, the very last one is one app which is called Find my find friends, but uh, uh, there's a reason for it being the very last one. Any, anything, Google Music is great, and it's free when you buy it. Uh, I'm not sure where it's free. Good app to share for parents is Schoolmate. I don't know Schoolmate. Uh, Shingo, Jason is volunteering to do a webinar on Schoolmate. He just says it in the app. Um, get him to sign the contract. <laughs> uh, I've got Two, almost there, almost there. I wanted to touch on productivity apps, and I want to cover two. And I think I'm teaching, I'm talking to the converted here, because I have a feeling that most of you will know these two apps. Most of you will know these two apps. Um, and Dropbox is for storing files. Files can be music, it can be documents, it can be pictures, all sorts of things. Evernote is also uh, a cloud service, so the computers are up in the States somewhere probably. 
um, Evernote, and there are free versions for both of these. Evernote is a similar thing, but works better with documents because what it does, if I take a picture of, we've got a new washing machine this week, I took a picture of the receipt as with my phone and put it into Evernote, and Evernote looked at the receipt and it does word recognition on there. So in the future, I can search Evernote and find that receipt for that washing machine. And I know, be honest, all of you at home have a drawer full of receipts. Throw them all in Evernote, use the free version. And the nice thing with this is that because they're cloud services, they work on any device. So when somebody says to me, how do I get a video onto my iPad or my iPhone? Now, there are lots of ways of doing it. All I do is I put it in Dropbox on using my desktop machine or my, you know, my laptop, any machine. I, I put it in the, the video into Dropbox. You could get somebody else to do it if you gave them the password to that folder. And then I download it using the Dropbox folder on my iPad. It's a really easy way to get files from anywhere onto your mobile devices. Works on Android as well. They have apps, Evernote and Dropbox for there. If you're Google school, you can do this with Google. And the last thing on this page, I'm going to mention this, Skitch. And again, I have a feeling I'm, uh, I'm preaching to the choir here, as I set the script, say, as it goes, Evernote. This is something a company Evernote bought many moons ago, well, not that long ago, called Skitch. And Skitch is really good for annotating over photographs. So if you've got a picture and you want to write over the top of the picture, it's free, then download the Skitch uh, app. And there we go. And, can, uh, and so Skitch would be something to put into uh, your digital toolbox. It's free, and the kids as well. Um, Right, so we're almost at the end. What I'm really sad about is what I have not done is I was going to actually share my iPad live so you could see it and go through it. Uh, but maybe in part two, there could be a part two on this. I want to mention this, and I'm not going to stream it, because I'm really, really excited about something that was released in the last uh, two or three months. Video streaming. And I'm just I'm hesitating because I'm looking at what you've written. Actually, you're right. I, and I have to say, throughout the whole presentation here, I'm presenting things that I use. I'm not necessarily presenting what might be the best for you or for your classroom. Your uh, your job from now until you retire, until you collect your free bus pass, is uh, is going to be continually evaluating what's good, what's not good. Although, if uh, many teachers will will delegate that evaluation to students, because if they're using them, who better to evaluate whether it's a load of rubbish or it's useful and easy to use? The students themselves, get them to do it. The health one at the beginning, remember, you have to delegate. You have to work as a team. Otherwise, the men in the white and women in the white no gender bias here. The men and women in white coats will come from the asylum and take you away. I think there's a very famous asylum in mental asylum in Sydney, isn't there? And I've forgotten the name of it. Anyway, get on to this. Of course, we're almost at the top of the hour. Um, there are two um, two new apps, and this is best done on an, on your phones, not on an iPad. There are two new apps for um, video streaming from your phone. Now you won't be able to read this, but the, on the left-hand side, the, box, the second one down, it's called Periscope. In Periscope, what you do is you put it on your iPhone. You can put your, your and I think there will be a version. They say they're going to make a version for Android. I don't know if it's out yet. Um, but, and you can put your iPhone at the back of the classroom, resting on the windowsill, and it will just stream everything that's going on in your classroom to the outside world. And a bad example, you might not want that. You're doing an assembly presentation and you want the parents outside to see it. Or somebody's absent and you want them to see something. Or there's a school production uh, at the end of the month. Or there's a sports match uh, going on and you want to stream it out to the outside world so people who are not there can see it. Um, Periscope does that. 
and you press, once it's set up, you press one button. It's just unbelievable. Now, it is transmitting out, and people that you're transmitting to can actually type in very much like you're doing today in, in the chat box, and they can send little hearts saying, I like this. Um, and I think there's a maximum number of people at the moment of about 50, I think, that can actually log on. But it's free. Um, it's linked to Twitter. It, it was bought by Twitter, in fact. Um, and, but you only need to use the Twitter bit if you want to. If you don't have a Twitter account, doesn't matter. Um, so that's called Periscope, and I'm really excited about that. If you were doing, if a child was doing uh, some very fine work on something on their desk, you could point your iPhone at it and stream that to your projector. And you could do it in other ways as well. But it's actually streaming it to the internet, so people elsewhere could see it. The other one that is big competitor is called Meerkat, M-E-E-R-K-A-T. I have both, and I've used both. My preference is Periscope. And the URL at the top of that page takes you to a page on my own website, Shambles, and it uh, gives you a comparison between Meerkat and Periscope. And I'm really excited about this. Um, uh, how the kids and you can stream live events. And actually, once you recorded them, they don't, they don't archive them online. But you can archive them into your own iPhone where you took the where, where you did the streaming, and then you can put it on YouTube or wherever wherever you into into Dropbox. You can put it into Dropbox. And we're almost there. We're almost at the end because the last one is this is the last one. Taking a while to load on my uh, screen. Here we go. Quite a number of years ago, I went through a mental change. I, I became aware that I could not be the guru on the stage anymore. Uh, you know, that, that really went away 15 years ago. I, I could no longer be the front of all wisdom. Not that I ever was. Who was I kidding? But I thought I was as a very young teacher, right? It's you know everything until you start teaching, and then you realize you know nothing. But I actually like the type, title of, of not teacher, not even facilitator, but I like the title of Chief Learner. Uh, I love that because it puts me exactly where I want to be. I want to learn next to you guys. I've learned stuff today watching them chat and, uh, and, the, and the audio bit at the beginning as well. And, uh, and that's brilliant. We'll never stop learning. We're, if there's a problem with this, we're addicted to lifelong learning. Uh, and so I love this term, Chief Learner. And I just wanted to share that. that if you're working with students and they're the chief learner in the classroom and the students are teaching you stuff, well, that's great. I, I'd just like to share one last thing with you. Is I have a particular challenge with this uh, uh, philosophy is that I actually work with a lot of teachers in Asia, a lot of international schools and, and international school teachers, but also the local teachers. And the problem with Asian, the Asian philosophy and culture is that it's very difficult very difficult for a teacher to say, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. It's culturally not accepted. Uh, and, and my heart's go out to them because they have to get over this. And Because the kids will go home and say, hey, mum, you know, Mrs. Smith said the other day that she didn't know the name of the volcano in, in uh, northern Australia. And the parents go, what? But, you know, for me, that's not a problem anymore. Uh, but in this cultural part of the world, that can be a problem for many teachers. And I think on that note, even though I've missed out the live demonstration completely, uh, I'm going to stop there. A couple of minutes over. Shingo, Carol, Ness, back to you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, it's very um, I guess difficult to cover multiple things um, in an hour or so. And um, so I guess tonight is, I guess, more of an introductory session rather than the, the actual session. Um, so we'll probably need to ask Shabble if he's happy to come back again to focus on the particular category or categories. Um, so I'll put up, um, I'm not going to where it went, but I'll just put up in here again. Um, in terms of the topics that you would like Shambles to cover, uh, where did it go? So here we go. So here's a, here's a bit.ly web link, and 
the just says um, the topic and um, if you could just fill that out and um, I will ask Shambles if he's happy to do it. Um, I don't know if it could be next week, it could be uh, the following week whenever he's available and I will um, choose two to see which one um, he's able to do so that way he's really getting to each app and actually demonstrating it um, and you can actually um, play around with it at home on your iPad as well. So, um, so in terms of the certificates, um, if you could just change the the title to iPad apps for teachers intro session, so that way um, you, you can put down like the part one, part two, or um, I guess the, the category names in the future. So um, if you could just give him um, a round of applause uh, in a virtual way, which is if you just click or hover over the smiley face, not the hand part, because hand just asks questions. Um, so there is a uh, applause button in there. And well, thanks very much, uh, Shambles. Are you able to come back next week, or is are you busy next week? Um, the next, actually, the next until until the middle of uh, until the until the middle of September, I'm pretty full. Um, so it would be better to wait until I'm back in Thailand, uh, which will be somewhere like the middle of September. What might be nice for this is to say, uh, just just for, just as a suggestion, is to say um, the first webinar of the month, for example. It's going to be focused on apps and uh, mobile devices, and, and and I like the idea of I like the idea of and you've done it before I think Jingo, uh, Carol Ness, uh, of sort of an app smackdown, like you choose a, a theme and I'd just be then one of the people that would contribute, but then other people would contribute what they thought was good for writing or for screencasting or whatever. So I like the idea of app smackdowns. It's uh, I did watch WWE wrestling once, and it stuck with me. <laughs> okay, yeah, no worries. Um, now that one should be working in the chat box. And so it's just a bitly um, slash CCT cert, as it stands for Community Connect Certificate, and um, you'll get the, um, the certificate email to you straight away and um, please just check your email address because I have one or two not being able to send because um, um, I think I've got left out with the M with a com so uh, please check before you submit. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's happening next week. Um, I'm running a session on Monday at school and for a staff PD day so I might do the a repeat session, which is the topic is um, the student voice in learning. So it's basically like it's it's based on um, the John Hattie's visible learning. So it's using the students' feedback to improve your teaching and how you can actually get the student um, voice quite easily. And what are some of the method and what are some of the questions you can use. So and this will be around again, but and the title is. Uh, iPad app for classroom teachers intro session. Just going to stop the recording. <laughs>